In this step, we'll create a new folder for our procedural generation graph, PCG, and rename it. Let's begin. Let's open the content browser and create a new folder for our procedural generation graph. Organizing our assets in folders helps keep our project tidy and manageable. Let's name the new folder appropriately. Now let's open the procedural generation graph that we've created. Since we have a landscape in our scene, we'll choose the landscape option from the input drop-down menu. Let's use the surface sampler node to sample the ground and adjust its position. By pressing D on the node, we can see the visual position in the scene. Let's drag and drop our created procedural generation graph into the scene. This will allow us to visualize its effects and make adjustments as needed. Now, as you can see, there are cubes with different colors representing positions in the scene. These cubes help us visualize the areas affected by the PCG graph. Now, we'll make sure that our PCG graph covers the required ground. We can either scale down the graph according to our needs or use unbound settings if our PC can handle it. As we make adjustments, observe how the PCG graph covers the ground accordingly. It's essential to ensure that the graph covers the required area for generating procedural content. Let's add the attribute noise node to our procedural generation graph. This node will help us control the points generated by the graph using noise. Let's play with the parameters of the attribute noise node to manipulate the procedural points. As we tweak the parameters, notice how the distribution of procedural points changes. This allows us to create variations in the generated content. Adding complexity and detail to our scene. Take your time to experiment with different parameter values until you're satisfied with the result. This process of tweaking parameters is essential for achieving the desired look and feel of our procedural content. First, let's add the density filter node to our procedural generation graph. This filter allows us to control the density of procedural points in our scene. Now let's play with the attributes of the density filter node to control the distribution of procedural points. By adjusting parameters such as density, fall off, and seed, we can achieve different effects. As we tweak the parameters, Notice how the density of procedural points changes. This allows us to create variations in the density of generated content, adding realism and detail to our scene. Take your time to experiment with different parameter values until you're satisfied with the density of procedural points. This process of tweaking parameters is crucial for achieving the desired look and feel of our scene.
To begin, let's add the bounds modifier node to our procedural generation graph. This modifier allows us to adjust the boundaries within which procedural points are generated. Next, we'll select the scale mode on the bounds modifier node. This mode enables us to adjust the bounds by scaling them up or down. Now let's play with the bounds min and the bounds max values to control the distribution of procedural points. By adjusting these values, we can define the area within which points are generated. Notice how changing the bounds min and bounds max values alters the distribution of procedural points. This allows us to fine-tune the placement of points within our scene. Take your time to experiment with different values until you're satisfied with the distribution of procedural points. This process of tweaking parameters helps us achieve the desired layout of points in our scene. Let's add the Transform Points node to our procedural generation graph. This node allows us to apply transformations such as rotation and scale to procedural points. Now, let's adjust the parameters of the Transform Points node to introduce variation in rotation and scale for procedural points. We'll set the rotation range from 0 to 360 degrees and the scale range from 0 0.8 to 1.2 as we tweak the parameters. Notice how the rotation and scale of procedural points change. This variation adds visual interest and realism to our scene, making it more dynamic and engaging. Take your time to experiment with different parameter values until you're satisfied with the rotation and scale variation. This process of tweaking parameters allows us to achieve the desired look and feel of our procedural content. Let's add the Static Mesh Spawner node in our Procedural Generation graph. This node allows us to replace procedural points with static meshes, in this case, trees. Next, we'll add four new mesh entries to the Static Mesh Spawner node. These entries will represent the tree meshes that we'll use to populate our scene. Now let's select the tree meshes from the bundle of trees we downloaded from the Epic Games Marketplace. We'll add these tree meshes to the mesh entries in the Static Mesh Spawner node. As we add the tree meshes to the mesh entries, observe how they replace the cubes in the scene. These tree meshes will add realism and detail to our environment, bringing it to life. Let's revisit the Density Filter node in our Procedural Generation graph. This node allows us to control the density of procedural points in our landscape. Now let's adjust the upper and lower bounds in the Density Filter node to fine-tune the density of procedural points. By setting these bounds, we can control how densely or sparsely points are distributed across the landscape. As we tweak the upper and lower bounds, Notice how the density of procedural points in the landscape changes. This allows us to tailor the distribution of points to match our specific requirements. Take your time to experiment with different bounds until you're satisfied with the density distribution across the landscape. This process of fine-tuning allows us to achieve the desired level of detail and realism. To start, let's add a new blueprint actor to our scene and name it Spline Road Path. This blueprint will define the path of the road in our scene. 
Next, let's open the blueprint and add a spline component to it. We'll name this component Road Path, as it will define the path of the road in our scene. Now let's select the main blueprint actor and set its tag to Road Path in the Attributes panel. This tag will help us identify the Road Path blueprint later on. Finally, let's select the spline component in the blueprint and enable scale visualization in the Attributes panel. This will allow us to visualize the scale of the spline while working on the scene. So let's drag the spline road path blueprint into our scene. This blueprint defines the path of the road and helps us exclude trees from populating the road area. Next, we'll adjust the scale visualization value of the spline component to 450. This allows us to visualize the scale of the spline and align it accurately with the road. Now let's align the spline with the road in our scene. This ensures that no trees populate the road area, maintaining realism, and accuracy. Open the procedural generation graph in Unreal Engine. This is where we'll add the necessary nodes to interact with the spline data. We'll add a get spline data node to the graph. This node will retrieve information about the spline we created for the road. Let's connect the get spline data node to the spline sampler node. Let's configure the Get Spline Data node. We'll set the Actor filter to All World Actors and specify the actor name as Road Path, which is the name of the spline blueprint. Let's add a Bounds Modifier node to the Spline Sampler in our Procedural Generation Graph. This node will help us adjust the bounds to define the area along the spline path. Next, let's start debugging the Bounds Modifier to visualize its effect on the spline path area. This will help us understand how changing the bounds affects the area where procedural content will be generated. Now let's change the bounds min and max values for all axes to understand the spline path area. By adjusting these values, we can define the area along the spline path where procedural content will be generated, ensuring that trees are excluded from the road.
as we constantly change the values. Observe how the spline path area is affected. This iterative process allows us to fine-tune the bounds to precisely exclude trees from the road, ensuring a clean and realistic environment. Difference node to our procedural generation graph. This node will help us exclude trees from the area where the road is located. Next, we'll connect our first tree PCG graph to the source input of the difference node. This allows us to use it as the base for our procedural generation. We'll also disconnect the previous connection to the static mesh spawner. Then, we'll connect the transform points node to the source input of the difference node. This ensures that the transformation effects are applied to the procedural points. After that, we'll connect the current spline PCG graph to the difference node, defining the area where the road is located. Now we'll connect the difference node to the static mesh spawner. This will generate procedural content while excluding trees from the road area. As you can see in the viewport, the road path is clear while trees are present on both sides. adding the ground assets we downloaded to the project. These assets can be found in the Quixel Megascans library and are available for free. Let's return to the procedural generation graph. Now that we have our ground assets ready, we can integrate them into our graph to replace the trees, then We'll duplicate and drag down the PCG graph nodes to make room for the ground assets. This helps us keep our graph organized and easy to manage. Since we don't need trees this time, we'll delete the mesh entries for trees from the static mesh spawner node. This clears the way for us to add the ground assets. Finally, let's add four new mesh entries to the static mesh spawner node and assign the ground meshes to them. This ensures that the ground assets will be generated instead of trees. Let's connect the surface sampler node to a new attribute node. As you can see, ground assets are spawning on the road to exclude ground assets from the road area. Let's connect the spline node to a difference node. This will ensure that ground assets are only generated outside the road, since we don't need the bounds modifier in the ground asset graph. Let's remove it. We'll connect the density filter directly to the transform points node. Finally, let's adjust the value of the translator I axis in the transform points node. By setting it to negative, we ensure that ground assets stay connected to the ground surface. We'll fine tune the density and bounds of ground assets in our procedural generation graph to achieve the desired look the points per square meter and point extent parameters in the surface sampler node. We'll then debug the node to understand how these changes affect the generation of ground assets. As you can see, there are too many trees populated in the scene. To address this, we'll use a density filter node to reduce their density. Let's play with the upper and lower bounds until we find the right balance. I'm fine-tuning the upper and lower bounds of the density filter node to achieve the desired density of trees.
By adjusting these values, we can control how densely or sparsely trees are distributed across the landscape. Currently, There's too much distance between the road and the trees. To address this, I'll update the values in the spline bounds modifier node. This should bring the trees closer to the edge of the road. Creating a more natural environment. And there we have it, by fine-tuning the density and bounds of ground assets. We've achieved a more balanced and realistic environment in our procedural generation graph. We'll focus on fine-tuning the density and placement of ground meshes in our procedural generation graph. To start, let's update the Y translate point in the transform points node. This will ensure that the ground meshes are properly aligned with the landscape, creating a more realistic look. I'm noticing that the ground meshes are not evenly distributed. To address this, let's adjust the density using a density filter node. We'll play with the upper and lower bounds until we achieve the desired distribution. I'm fine-tuning the upper and lower bounds of the density filter node to achieve the desired density and distribution of ground meshes. This allows us to control how densely or sparsely the ground meshes are distributed across the landscape. The beauty of working with PCG graphs is that we can make adjustments later if needed. If we feel that the density or distribution of ground meshes still needs tweaking. We can easily come back and update the graph accordingly. By fine-tuning the density and placement of ground meshes, we've created a more realistic and visually appealing environment in our procedural generation graph. Let's duplicate the nodes from attribute noise to static mesh spawner. This sets up the groundwork for adding grass to our landscape. Now let's connect the surface sampler to the third attribute noise node and add four new mesh entries to the static mesh spawner. These mesh entries will be used to spawn grass meshes on our landscape. <laughs> 
to ensure that grass doesn't appear on the road. We'll connect the spline path to the difference node. This ensures that grass meshes are only generated outside the road area. Since we duplicated the connected nodes, the position of the grass meshes needs adjustment. Let's update the transform points node to ensure that the grass meshes are properly positioned on the landscape. We'll adjust the density and scale of the grass meshes to spread them across the landscape more evenly. To start, let's adjust the density filter node to ensure that the grass meshes are spread evenly across the landscape. We'll update the attributes values until we achieve the desired distribution. Next, I'm updating the transform points node and density filter node to fine tune the position and density of the grass meshes. This ensures that the grass covers the landscape evenly. I'm also updating the scale min and scale max values of the grass meshes using the transform points node. This allows us to control the size variation of the grass across the landscape. Finally, I'm updating all the PCG graph nodes until I feel that the grass meshes look just right on the landscape. It's all about fine-tuning until we achieve the desired result. Let's duplicate the nodes from Attribute Noise to Static Mesh Spawner. This sets the groundwork for adding small plants to our landscape.
Next, we'll connect the surface sampler to the new duplicated attribute noise node and delete all the old mesh entries from the static mesh spawner. This clears the way for adding small plant meshes instead. To prevent plants from spawning on the road, we'll add a spline spawner to the difference node. This ensures that plant meshes are only generated outside the road area. Now let's adjust the density filter and transform points nodes to fine tune the position and density of the small plants. This allows us to control how densely or sparsely the plants are distributed across the landscape. Take a moment to look around the scene and observe how the added meshes contribute to the overall visual appeal. This allows us to assess the progress and make any final adjustments if needed. 